Hello friends, welcome to lecture 7.4 on the unit on continuous wavelet transforms. In this lecture, we are going to learn what is a scalogram. This is the equivalent of spectrogram and periodogram uh, with respect to short time Fourier transform and Fourier transform respectively. And also look at how to compute scalogram using the wavelet toolbox in MATLAB. In the previous lectures, we have learnt what is the definition of CWT, how to convert scale to frequency and how to compute the CWT itself. Therefore, this is a natural sequel. As I have just said, we will first go through definition of scalogram and then uh, look at how to compute this in MATLAB. The scalogram as I said is equivalent to that of spectrogram and periodogram both of which are derived from the energy conservation or preservation relations in the respective transforms. When it comes to CWT, the energy is preserved according to equation 1 where we have the C psi as the admissibility constant, T x as usual is the continuous wavelet transform. Now, if you look at the equation on the left hand side, you have the energy of the signal based on the signals representation in time domain and then on the right hand side, we have this double integral. Notice that the scales run from 0 to infinity and the translation parameter tau runs from minus infinity to infinity. Therefore, the energy density in the time scale plane is the mod T of tau comma s square by s square because the integral or the double integral of this quantity here gives us the energy of course, bearing a factor 1 over C psi. So, strictly speaking I should have a 1 over C psi tagging along with P of tau comma s, but we ignore that because visually the 1 over C psi is going to be constant across the time scale plane and therefore, does not make any difference. However, if you want to recover the energy correctly or if you want to compare this with the signals energy or the that obtained from spectrogram and so on, you have to bring in 1 over C psi. So, keep this point in mind. Very often we are interested in the time frequency plane as we had argued when we wanted to convert scale to frequency and so on. So, in signal analysis the time frequency plane is of interest. And Therefore, we convert the <coughs> scalogram which is now the scalogram. The earlier one is also called scalogram, but strictly speaking if you look at the literature scalogram refers to the energy density obtained from CWT in the time frequency plane. So, you have to convert the expression given in equation 2 to uh, a quantity which is in terms of tau and omega. Right? And how do we do that? Now, we go back to our scale to frequency conversion expression. We know approximately this pseudo frequency relation omega equals omega c by s, where omega c is the center of the pass band uh, frequency uh, of the wavelet. And as I had mentioned in the unit on scale to frequency, you could replace this omega c with another reference omega which could be a peak frequency and so on, but it is usually the center frequency. Now, when you bring in this relation between omega and s and take it back to equation 1. So, we do not directly substitute in equation 2 per se. We first rewrite equation 1 in terms of tau and frequency. So, what is the expression that uh, results when we make this substitution? One has to first derive the relation between d s and d omega as I, I shall show to you on the board. So, we have this relation omega equals omega c by s. Therefore, d omega is minus d uh, omega c <coughs> over s square times d s. And as a result, I have d s over s square as minus 1 over omega c d omega right. <clears throat> and now, we take this relation and plug it into equation 1 
as a result of which I have the double integral now as T x tau s being replaced by omega c over omega. So, I am going to evaluate the continuous wavelet transform at omega c over omega <coughs> times d tau of course, I have also 1 over c psi and then omega c coming in the minus sign is taken care uh, in the integral itself therefore, I have d tau d omega right <coughs> and uh, that is about it because you have a minus infinity to infinity you should be able to really uh, not worry about the negative uh, sign per se. So, this now is my <coughs> scalogram in the time frequency plane because the area under this gives me the total energy. Of course, strictly speaking I should also include this 1 over omega c c psi. So, that is exactly what we have in expression uh, equation 4 and now notice that the scalogram is a function of tau and omega and again to reiterate we have ignored 1 over omega c c psi in the expression because it does not make any difference to the visual appearance. However, if you want to recover the total energy you will have to put it back and then uh, into equation 4 and then integrate that in the time frequency plane. In fact, only if you put back 1 over omega c c psi into equation 4, you can make it comparable to the results that you obtain for example, from spectrogram or Wigner Willi distribution and so on because they give you the correct energy density expressions in time frequency plane. <coughs> now, normally what happens is the raw scalogram as we have defined in equation 4 does not give you the correct comparison be between energies at different scales. And why does this happen? That is because at each scale the wavelet has a different width. So, when I am calculating the energy density at a particular tau and at a particular scale I am calculating the energy at a particular tau. <coughs> the amount of energy that is uh, the value let us say of the energy density at a particular tau depends on the width of the wavelet because the value <coughs> is obtained by correlating the signal with the wavelet at that scale right. What is T of tau comma s or tau comma omega c or omega? It is essentially the correlation between the signal and the wavelet. So, let me just uh, illustrate that for you with a sketch. So, what I have is that <coughs> let us say I have some uh, signal of this nature right and here I have time t and I am going to bring in a wavelet uh, into my analysis. If I choose if I am looking at wavelet at the high scales that means I am looking at wide wavelets <coughs> then the CWT computed with such a wavelet is essentially the correlation let us say I am standing here this is the current tau that I am looking at this is where the wavelet is centered at. Then the wavelet is going to look like this because I have I am looking at a wide wavelet. So, what happens is the T is essentially the correlation between the signal and this wavelet. And because this wavelet is wide it is going to cover a huge portion of the signal and therefore, the number is going to be higher than compared with the situation where I have a narrower wavelet that is I am looking at a wavelet now at low scales. In, the, in such situations let us say I am looking at a very fine scale wavelet or a high frequency wavelet relatively. Then what happens is by design of this wavelet this is going to be much narrower than the wavelet at the higher scale. Consequently, this wavelet here located at the same center tau is not is going to see a smaller portion of the signal. So, when the energy calculations are done it is unfair in some sense to compare 
the energy computed with the wavelet at this scale and the energy computed with the wavelet at this scale. So, you want to be fair and therefore, normally what is done is we choose a factor of 1 over s to rescale or renormalize the scalogram. So, that the scalogram computed at higher scales are scaled down to account for the fact that this high scale wavelet is able to see a larger portion of the signal. And likewise, the scalogram computed at lower scales are kind of scaled up and they are brought on, on par with the uh, one that you are computing at high scales. Of course, this is not some rigorous factor here, you could choose some other factor as well, but we have chosen 1 over s, you, you could actually choose some other factor, but essentially that factor should bring the, uh, should account for this phenomenon that happens that the high scale wavelets see a larger portion of the signal and the smaller scale wavelets see a smaller portion of the signal. As long as your normalization factor is able to account for it, you are ok. Generally what is used in literature is 1 over s. This amounts to saying that I am scaling the coefficients with 1 over root s, ok. That is what it amounts to and I will show you how to do things in uh, MATLAB, how to plot the normalized scalogram and the unnormalized scalogram as well. So, as we have just discussed, normally one uses a normalized scalogram with the normalization factor being 1 over s and 1 over s is essentially omega over omega c once again by virtue of the scale frequency relation. Now, before we really go and learn how to compute the scalogram and plot them in MATLAB, let us look at what the scalogram essentially is doing. It is essentially spreading or capturing the energy of the signal not at a point in the time frequency plane, but it is capturing in a box. Normally, these boxes are called Heisenberg boxes because the the box itself comes into picture because of the uncertainty principle or the duration bandwidth principle and because again of the parallel between the duration bandwidth and the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, these boxes are called Heisenberg boxes. What are the widths of this boxes in time and uh, along time and frequency axis? Well, to determine that let us start with a wavelet and normally because we use analytic wavelets, we have restricted this discussion to analytic wavelets. You can of course extend this discussion to real wavelets as well. So, let us assume that we have an analytic mother wave which is centered at t equals 0, uh, it is a fair assumption and let us assume that it has a center frequency omega c. And further let us denote the duration and bandwidth of this analytic mother wave by sigma square t bar and sigma square omega bar. Now, what you see in uh, equation 6 are essentially the, that is expression for sigma square t bar and sigma square omega bar are uh, they, they directly follow from the definitions of duration and bandwidth that we have learned in unit 4. <coughs> Notice that we have assumed the wavelet to be located at 0 that is in the sense the center of wavelet is 0 in time therefore, we only have a t square here. Now, when you consider the mother wavelet that is what we would like to know because what happens is the smearing of the signals energy is determined by the smearing the energy spreads of the wavelet in time and frequency which is which are essentially given by the duration and bandwidth of the wavelet. Because the wavelet is a scaled and translated wave and then there is a 1 over root s factor, you will have to recompute the duration of the wavelet, but the exp expression for the duration comes from the definition itself. So, I have sigma square t as integral minus infinity to infinity of t minus tau square. Remember that the wavelet is centered at tau whereas the, whereas the mother wave is assumed to be centered at 0. Therefore, the center time or the mean time is tau and I have mod psi tau comma s t square all I have to do to get to the answer that is as s square times sigma square t bar I have to substitute 
the for the expression uh, for psi of tau comma s which is 1 over root s psi of t minus tau by s and do a change of variable. It is a very simple uh, one or two step derivation to arrive at this answer. So, I leave that to you it is a very simple exercise. So, all you have to do is replace this with 1 over root s psi of t minus tau by s and do a change of variable and you should be able to get this uh, expression. We have qualitatively talked about this when we were talking of the scaling properties of Fourier transforms in unit 3. And then we have sigma square omega again falling out of the definition of the bandwidth and I have here omega minus omega c over s. Remember when I scale the mother wave by factor s the center frequency shifted to omega c over s. Therefore, I have to use that here in the definition psi the big psi of tau comma s of omega is a Fourier transform of the wavelet now. And once again what you do is you first <coughs> derive the relation between the big psi tau, tau comma s of omega and the big psi of omega which is a Fourier transform mother wave using the scaling property of the Fourier transforms. Uh, we have done this in the deriving uh, the FFT algorithm for computing CWT. So, you should be able to uh, get that relation there as well. Just do that uh, substitute that here and then again do a change of variable you should be able to show that <coughs> essentially your sigma square omega is sigma square bar omega uh, over s square. That means now what is happening is as expected when I am looking at high scale wavelets that is wide wavelets they have larger duration than the mother wave, but then narrower bandwidth compared to the mother wave. Likewise for high frequency wavelets that is wavelets at small scales they have much smaller duration than the uh, mother wave, but a wider or a larger bandwidth than that of the mother wave. In other words what the wavelet is doing to the signal energy is it is taking the signal energy and spreading it like you have seen on the board earlier. It it is analyzing a large portion of the signal if you are using a wide wavelet or it is analyzing a smaller portion of the signal if you are using a high frequency wavelet. So, it is spreading the energy nevertheless it is not analyzing the signal exactly uh, at a frequency or a time point of it is it is spread over time and energy and this signal energy is therefore smeared in this box Heisenberg box of widths given by s times sigma t bar and say 1 over s times sigma omega bar along the time and frequency axis respectively. Okay. So, therefore, you should not be able to see the ideal time frequency energy density, but a smeared energy density in the time frequency plane that is anyway expected. Uh, by virtue of the duration bandwidth principle. So, what we shall do now is learn how to compute the scalogram in MATLAB.